course, at those times, they were not thinking of electronic voting. But there is no reason for those principles to lapse because now we're dealing with computers. In fact, there's even more reason for us to be paying attention to each one of those steps. So once we realize that the right to vote has all of these components, then it's incumbent upon those who operate elections and the law for Pennsylvania as well as other states to create processes to ensure that each and every step is properly protected and can be proved. Not simply a matter of trust, not trusting poorly designed computers that they're going to count accurately because we know that they don't. And this is part of the sort of misconception about computers. When the country moved to electronic voting in the wake of the Florida 2000 disaster, the thought was that we would remove human error from the whole system and we would have these impartial, perfect computers receiving votes, able to compute them, no sort of bias involved, and then out would come these perfect results. And then we could all say, hooray, nobody was able to uh, pre-punch ballot cards or hide ballots or any of the other kinds of mischief that had occurred previously. What they did not realize in Congress and repeatedly throughout the nation is that they only moved the opportunity from, for human error from the places it used to be to a, a box and human beings who were coding, does, I should start out with architecting, designing, uh, coding, designing the hardware, operating the systems, and then if they were not designed well, they could, <laughs> they could uh, provide flawed results as well as opportunities for hidden manipulation of those processes. And indeed, we have plenty of proof. We've had definitive scientific studies since 2007. 2007, the California Secretary of State convened the